Hi, I'm Eleanor with Soap Previews for those who just can't wait. Three months after the biggest controversy in EastEnders history comes the payoff, where Ronnie somehow has to undo the damage of swapping babies. But it's not so simple for her or the writers. The week begins with her realising how she's affecting Jack and agreeing to help him out at R&R. &R. Kat's at a hen at the club and tells Ronnie to stop being so glum, at least she has her baby. But of course, she doesn't. Then, Michael accuses Ronnie of playing hard to get and kisses her. She spurns his advances, so he tells Jack she kissed him. The girl's in a right model and apologises to a confused cat. But before she can say more, Jack steps in and tells her they've got to rush to hospital. Max and Abby have been involved in a car crash after Max was speeding to get to Tanya's wedding on time and lost control and slammed into a lorry. But when Ronnie wanders into a maternity ward, she breaks down. She tells Jack she's going to put everything right, then tells him James isn't his son. Ronnie bravely walks into Tanya's wedding reception knowing it's the last time she'll ever hold James. Next, we're on the cobblestones. You're never destined for a quiet time with big Jim McDonald around, but next week's events are dramatic even by his shameful standards. Becky and Steve have started their disappearing act, with Becky taking Amy and Max to the airport while Steve waits for Jim to pay up for the pub. Only, he can't raise it legitimately, and being an old school villain, he cuts off the end of a shotgun and heads to his nearest building society, Song's Disguise. It all goes predictably badly, and Liz gets a visit from the police, telling her Jim's in custody. Liz's pub dream is over, and she walks out of Weatherfield forever. Meanwhile, Tracy has twigged something's up when she learns Becky picked up Amy from school, then discovers Steve's contacted a solicitor. Becky and Steve return crestfallen, their plan in ruins. But worse, Tracy is right on to their child snatching. How will she make them pay for it? Carla is furious when she returns and finds Maria has missed the deadline for Frank's order. Is she really up to managing the knicker stitches? Then Carla's horrified to see Maria have a go at Frank in the Rovers. But it's Maria's turn to be stunned when she learns Frank's buying into Underworld. It could be time for Maria to get out the curling tongs again. Finally, we're in the Dales. Nicola's dream life is turning nightmarish when she sees Jimmy giving money to Kelly to pay for her and Elliot's stay at Marlins. And Carl warns Nicola that Kelly's got her claws into his brother, especially when Kelly smugly bats off her love rival and even kisses Jimmy. He pulls away and tells Nicola he wants to give their marriage a proper go. But when Kelly reveals she tried to buy her off, Jimmy is stunned at her scheming. Jimmy tells Kelly his marriage is off, then publicly humiliates Nicola by making her apologise to Kelly for her deviousness. Meanwhile, Alicia is driven to more thieving, but this time it's closer to home. She robs Layla's shop. And as Layla accuses Amy, David quickly deduces it was Alicia, and she's forced to confess to her sister, who throws her out. Andy takes in her and Jacob, but he tells her she needs to apologise to Layla. Finally, there's more woe for Jackson, who's putting a brave face on things. Although it's anything but funny when he invites Aaron to a comedy gig and he falls ill with a chest infection.